Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dennis Norden. Hello, and, and, and were you as surprised as I was to learn London Weekend at 21? I don't know, they, they just seem older somehow to me. Anyway, they, 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 they've had a smashing birthday so far. Beautiful card from the BBC and a book token from Channel 4. And perhaps most heartwarming of all, there's been a whole clutch of congratulatory programmes in their honour. Admittedly, they were all made by LWT themselves, but it's the thought that counts. And the thought behind this one is to offer you a reminder of the great laughter makers who've come your way via London Weekend. So let's begin this exercise in what you might call scraping the top of the barrel by recalling what must be at least a semi-precious duel in the company's crown, their Audience With series of programmes. Now, they've only made eight of these so far. The first of them back in 1980, featuring that unpretentious homebody, Dame Edna Everidge. <laughs> then, subsequently, they were built round the likes of these folk. The, the, the television treat you like you're four years of age. Now, here's the weather. <laughs> Where do you live? <laughs> and this is a wee cloud. <laughs> I really feel brassed off when they do that. They stick clouds and lightning on the board. You don't need to do that. I don't know what a cloud looks like. Just tell me, I'll understand. So it was always full of that kind of thing. We had a, a sergeant age 28, who had not a tooth in his head, and therefore everything folded out like that. <laughs> and the new teeth had been ordered from the Army Dental Corps in 1937, <laughs> and they had not yet arrived. I mention this for a very definite purpose, because he was a terrible man, and he watched you writing home, and he watched parcels arrive, and used to come in and say, any cake? <laughs> and you'd say, no, it went, once you got wise to this. You said, no, I got some toffee. I have to tell you, I, I felt a little while ago that I hadn't made enough sacrifices somehow because I'd been given so much. What have I given? I often think, that's why I'm here for heaven's sake. But I thought, what have I given for the conservation of energy, for example? I thought, I've given nothing. I've done nothing to conserve energy. And then it hit me. I thought, there's one thing I can do. I can have Norm taken off his life support system. <laughs> One of the lovely put-downs was, um, tell me about Jeremy, Jeremy Swan, we were doing Jack and Ori, and he said that when Bobby Heltman was doing the, um, the uh, dream in America, they played a stadium at one point and did the, the ballet in a floodlit sports stadium, and Robert was given the umpire's room because they felt, you know, it was the most commodious room. And so he was given the umpire's room, and then the boy went round calling the half, you know and knocked on the doors for half an hour and got no reply, so he went in. And on a table, Robert Helpman had put a chair, and on top of that chair, he was standing, craning with a, a mirror and a makeup stick against the one naked light bulb that was hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> and he said, are you all right up there? Doing this very elaborate eye makeup for Oberon. And gold and green, you see. He said, are you all right up there, Sir Robert? And he said, oh, yeah, I'm fine. Goodness knows how these umpires manage. <laughs> Quite an exciting journey to get you. I flew here on the famous Manchester shuttle. It's rather an old aeroplane. I had to go next to the rear gunner. <laughs> the trouble is, you never get a proper movie, you know, because the flying time is so short. You just get one of the air hostesses flicking through the bunty very quickly. And... <laughs> it's not the same. I was thinking I should have come on the train, actually. I should have come into city. But whenever I go into city, I always seem to end up sitting opposite the woman who's eating the individual fruit pie by sucking the filling up through the hole. <laughs> But the last time I went into city, I was sitting there like this, and there was a couple across the aisle having sex. But this being a British trade, nobody said anything. <laughs> <laughs> we 
when they finished, they both lit up a cigarette, and this woman said, up, said excuse me, I think you'll find this is a non-smoking compound. <laughs> You can't buy that kind of material by the yard. Of, of course, the, the, the other attraction of the Audience With series was watching that, that glittering array of notables and quotables, the audience itself. Particularly those members of it who found themselves, to use the tactful expression, interacting with the programme star. Donald, would you please stand up? Thank you. Donald, I've been a very, very small fan of yours for years. <laughs> I mean, you have never been a great favorite of mine, but I've always respected you. If I were forced to, I would work with you, I swear. Or just taking the Michael out of you. Please. I was going to ask you. Yes. I was going to ask you, Miss Brooks. Yes. Um, if you've ever done anything that you were thoroughly ashamed of. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Donald. Well, apart from Sheila in Cincinnati, <laughs> oh, yes. when I was a little kid, I was uh, nearly arrested. This is another true story. I was in the Woolworths with my friend Meish, and we never had money, so we would always steal something, like a little yo-yo or, or a toy of some kind. This day, I stole a little tiny toy pistol, a toy gun, and I nearly got away with it. I was walking out the store, and I said, hey, you! No, it wasn't near you. It was in America. <laughs> You. Hey, you kid, come back here. I saw you take that toy gun. I didn't know what to do. I was petrified. I swear to God. So I pulled out this little toy gun and said, Stand back, I'll blow your head off. <laughs> and he did. He stood back and we ran out of the store. Right? It was wonderful. In your illustrious, unique career, there seems to me to be one thing missing, and that is the cinema. Don't you think it'd be a good idea to tell the story of your remarkable life on film? Yes, I would. I'm thinking of making a film. <laughs> Thinking of making a film about my life, I've been approached by David Putnam. He wrote me a lovely letter from his club in Wigmore Street. There's <laughs> a gorgeous little hint of detail about the letter, I thought. Uh, a film of my life will be wonderful. No, I don't know. I think I'll have... I'll play myself when young. And I thought... Uh, little Jane Seymour can play me as I am now. That little dimple dame, Judy Dench, could play me, you know, in the next decade or so. And then I'll have Diana Rigg playing me as an old woman. <laughs> in heavy character makeup. I suppose when you were in the army, you were a very neat and disciplined soldier, were you? Quite right. <laughs> I think you must have read somewhere that I wasn't. Some report or other. <laughs> That was the time that I met David Niven, who told me that there had been a general uh, at Sandhurst who was controlling some of these exam papers and not passing people. And he came out with a, with a wonderful remark, which I'm sure that he was too gifted to be a really good general, because he said about one candidate, uh, he sets himself extremely low standards, which unfortunately he fails to live up to. <laughs> What month are you? Eight and a half. Eight and a half. Oh, your first? Yes. Oh, so what are you going to have? A child? child? No, I know a child. I get it. Surprise, surprise. A little puppy. No, uh, I mean, boy, uh, boy or girl, do you know? know. You don't know? Do you have natural childbirth? I want to. I hope oh, to. Oh, God. Why? <laughs> I, I, I had a Jewish delivery, which is they knock you out with the first pain, they wake you up when the hairdresser shows up. <laughs> and the breathing and all that oh, yeah, yes. yeah. Don't be ashamed to ask for help when it's so, you know. Oh, when I was in late, when I was having my child, I screamed. When I was having my child, ah! <laughs> and that was just during conception. <laughs> We, we, we actually went to the trouble of checking up on that last one, and we can tell you that that expectant mother suffered absolutely no ill effects from her prenatal encounter with Joan Rivers. In fact, only a week afterwards, the baby arrived. It was a little boy they named Jamie, 
and he's turned out normal in every respect. <laughs> Except possibly that the first words he spoke were, can we talk? <laughs> so that, that practice of, of conscripting members of the public into the act is known among comedians as working the audience. And for a look at some others on the LWT roster who use it as a kind of laugh support system, let's turn to Richard Digents, Michael Barrymore, Wayne Dobson, and of course the man with A-levels in audience working, Bruce Forsyth. So I'll tell you what we're going to do tonight. You're going to see, for the first time ever, a British artist on British television live get four encores. <laughs> now, I might need your help on this, so look. If you've got anything on your lap, put it down just for a minute. All the handbags and all that sort of stuff. And the ladies, if you've got anything on your laps, put them down. <laughs> uh, after I count three, you've got to do this. I want you all to stand up, all right? When I count three, I want you, everyone in the theatre, to stand up. And the people at home. <laughs> after three, all right? Do it, haven't you? <laughs> now, you've got to, otherwise I'm going to go down like a French kiss at a family reunion. Here. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Right, when I count three, ready? One. Two, three, up. Everybody up. That's it. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, sit down again. And that's what you do at the end. <laughs> well, I go off. Just before I go off on the curtain there, all right, I'll bow and that's your cue. All right, because it's all recorded this. They won't know at home. <laughs> I'll bow. You stand up, all right, and then I'll be in the papers and things next week. I won't be able to go to Sainsbury's, nothing. It'll be great. <laughs> Oh, what's up with you? What did, 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 didn't you like that one? Hello, I'm talking to you. <laughs> right, I'll do another one for you. There we are, another quick impression for you. Chuck Berry, do you like that one? <laughs> you didn't like that either, right? That's it. <laughs> I've been watching you all night, you know that. Come with me, come on, up again. No, I don't care, off you go, out. <laughs> I don't care whether you miss the act or not, you have to know. Oh, you found that funny, did you? Right, you can tell me. Come on. Get out. It's not a gag, clear off! I've got something for you. Ooh. It's... It's in my pocket. Can I see it? No, it's in my for you in a moment. This is a magic wand. Now this would take the wand. This magic wand is very special because it makes things bigger. Can I try it? No, it's <laughs> what I have for you is made of leather. Mm. It's actually a wallet. Now this wallet is rather strange in design. It's got a zip all the way around. Don't undo the zip, but would you agree there's no way inside there apart from the zip? Just check. <laughs> Good. Do you want to let the smell? Mm. Good. You want to go over here? I like you. I like you. Have those 30 male dancers arrived? The tap dancers? Nothing. You see what I mean? That's why I have to have insurance. <laughs> Roy. Roy. Come on. Roy. Come round the back. Come round the back. Come here. Now we're a team. We're all it. All right, personality boy, right. Now, what size, what size hat are you? That one? That one'll be all right, fine. Will be fine. What size are you? You get right here. You get there. You come over here, come over here. That's it. You stand there. Further in, further in, that's it. And you up the top. On the top there. Okay, Blair. Okay, fine. Now, all you do is follow me, lads. Follow me, okay? Right, here we go. Just sway, just sway. All right, this, okay? There we are. <laughs> Good. That's lovely. Now go the other way, will you? Look at that face. Oh. Somebody must love him, isn't it? Shame? Coochie, coochie, coo! You're lovely, you're all lovely! Do you want to see? Take my money for a while! <laughs> Not all of it, just loads! Look at that, loads of money! I'll take the wall, right, so all you poor people can come up and worship it! <laughs> just 
the, uh, the multifaceted Harry Enfield, one of that new group of comedians who've changed the landscape of TV comedy. It was a process in which LWT played a pioneering part starting back in 1983 when they offered the new comedy generation a first TV home in programs like New Entertainers and Pajama Rama. Then in 1986, by constructing those two wildlife preserves known as Saturday Live and Friday Night Live. Now, both of those have been raided for this next compilation, which begins, however, with Rowan Atkinson in one of his gentler characterizations. As manager of the team, it would be totally unfair, not to say unethical, of me as manager to single out any one person for criticism, but Duckworth, you were crap. <laughs> In the winter when we had that hurricane, I was standing at a bus stop and all of a sudden this bus shelter blew straight past me. Then three all came round the corner, straight after each other. A while ago I had no electricity in my house, I had no lights, I couldn't see what I was doing. Good thing my camera had a flash. <laughs> Going all around my house like that. <laughs> Wait a second, sandwich, I took 60 pictures of my kitchen. <laughs> The neighbors called the police. They thought there was lightning in my house. <laughs> I put tape on the mirrors in my house so I won't accidentally walk through into another dimension. <laughs> I put instant coffee into a microwave oven. I almost went back in time. <laughs> I put a new engine in my car, but I didn't take the other one out. <laughs> so I can go 500 miles an hour. <laughs> I took the headlights off and I put strobe lights on. So when I drive at night, it looks like I'm the only one that's moving. I do think I could be in the army, though, really, because I could kill. I could. It'd have to be under the right circumstances, though. I would have to find the enemy with another woman. <laughs> Women, we don't kill people very often. If we don't like them, we just crochet them something very ugly. <laughs> I don't understand one question. Sometimes I'm walking on the street and people ask me, do you have any spare change? Does that make sense to you? Do you have any spare change? How can you tell you haven't finished living your life yet? I only get this sad these days because you always get the best stories first. For instance, on Thursday, a lot of things happen. Spain vote to stay in NATO, the teachers go back to work. The French elections are in full swing, and I arrest someone in Sweden for killing Mr. Olive Pan. And what is this sun headline? Freddy Starr is eat my hamster. You must be warned. You must be warned that the fridge is a home wrecker. The fridge breaks up relationships, it breaks up lives, especially in communal houses where you have to live together. Like when people are students or when they live with their mates, and mates translates as people you live to because you can't afford the rent on your own. <laughs> who shares a house is a fridge demon. They are demon fridge users. Everyone has their own particular way of being a bastard. The first and the worst fridge demon in a communal house is Mr. Hey, look, it was only a sausage. <laughs> oh, it was my sausage and you ate it. <laughs> hey, look, it was only a sausage. It's all a long way from Keith Harris and Orville, isn't it? <laughs> that, 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 of course, was a gifted and highly verbal Ben Elton. No matter what the subject, no opinion poll has ever put him down as a don't know. <laughs> Another group of more than averagely talented comedy performers to emerge in the 80s was a whole cluster of new style double acts. Out of several of those who look as if they're built for the long haul, we've chosen the following three with absolutely no doubts at all about this first couple. We are Frinton Saunders, and um, it's true. We're a female double act. <laughs> yes. And uh, we're still very good friends. And uh, I think Dawn has probably got something she'd like to tell you all now. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Um, well, really, I'm just delighted to have this opportunity, just to tell you what a super person Jenny is. Oh, no! <laughs> She's, uh, she's a very warm and giving partner to us. <laughs> what are you so surprised about? You wrote this. 
that's it. Kind and lovely. Right? Thank you. Thank you. That's good to show. I mean, we're still very good friends. Um, we go around to each other's house, that kind of thing. And you know, that's not thing. strictly true, is it? I'm just telling no, you. Sorry, you're telling lies, aren't you? Because <laughs> you've never actually been to my house, have you? I didn't want to go into that. That's embarrassing for you. Um, I'm anyway, not embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed. It's just embarrassing for you. I'd like to know why you've I'm never sorry. been to my house. <laughs> it's just that Dawn's family are gypsies. Anyway. Uh, Quickly. I told uh, you my grandmother went to Ireland on a camping trip 20 well, years ago. <laughs> I live in a flat in Paddington, well, actually. Come and see you then. Well, all thank right. you very much. Anyway, this is our sort of first big television it's not spectacular. A very big flat, of course. <laughs> this is our first big television spectacular. And one of the reasons, and Jennifer, really that it is not a very big flat is because we are quite a poor family. Is there anything family, more you'd actually. like to say? You're just digging your own grave. Yes, it's quite pretty embarrassing. <laughs> Right. What were we hoping to do later? And one of the Enough. reasons, Jennifer, <laughs> that we are a poor family is because you take all the money. I didn't. <laughs> you take all the money that I'm we sorry, get doing jigs like I this. I'm sorry, it's I didn't want to go into You that do. Now. It's just Two people, one person gets the money. Is that Millions of people. It's just embarrassing I'm for you. Interested. All right, then I'm sorry. It's just when I got Dawn from the job centre, um, <laughs> We agreed on a two-year training on a low wage until she's really funny. <laughs> As you can see, it hasn't quite worked yet. <laughs> so perhaps you should apologise, Dawn. Perhaps you should apologise, Dawn. There are millions of people watching. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and to me... <laughs> I'm sorry, your highness. Thank you. So you're a virgin? Not yet. <laughs> Don't get upset. Don't get upset. They're not laughing at you, Mark. They're not laughing at all. No, they're, listen, they're, not laughing. they're not laughing at you. They're laughing with me at you. It's coming through me. Well, that's all very well. It's my fault. I said something about the Pope. Well, that's stupid. You know your girlfriend's Catholic. I know she's Catholic. I didn't know the Pope was. Didn't no, know. <laughs> May the God of peace fly around this world bringing harmony and understanding to all nations. Peace to all nations, except Russia. <laughs> They're communists, aren't they? Peace to all nations, except Russia and Argentina. <laughs> they beat us at football. Everybody beats us at football. I don't care. Okay. Peace to all nations, except Russia and Argentina and France. <laughs> France. They've always hated us, the French. You know. Huh? Yeah. Bastards. <laughs> right, peace to all nations except Russia, Argentina, and France. Let us and not Japan. <laughs> Japan. Gareth, they eat raw fish. Mm. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, peace to all nations except Russia, Argentina, France, France, and Japan, and Japan, and the Isle of Wight. <laughs> what do you mean the Isle of Wight? You ever had a holiday in the Isle of Wight? <laughs> and the Isle of Wight. The, uh, the Oblivion Boys followed French and Saunders and the last two were Hale and Pace for kitten lovers everywhere. <laughs> to reflect that when comedians like those first came on the scene, dazzling the young, completely baffling the old, a lot of people reacted as though the barbarians were at the gate. Now, fortunately, that new generation of entertainers is being accepted as part of the mainstream, which is exactly the area we'll be going back to in part three. So let's ease ourselves into it with a duet between Bob Hope and our only top British singing star, whose name ends in a U. The night is young, the sky is clear, and if you want to go walking, dear, it's delightful, it's pleasure, it's still lovely. I understand the reason why you're sentimental, cause so am I. It's delightful, it's delicious, it's delightful. Oh, 
you could do And when I kissed you, just say to me It's July, 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 Sincerely sorry we can't do more of him, the immaculate George Carl, who's appeared in several of the Royal Variety shows covered by LWT. For me, incidentally, one of the minor pleasures of any Royal Variety show is always that moment in the finale when we can see which world-famous, internationally known celebrity is only pretending to know the words of the national anthem. But <laughs> contrary to a widely held belief, LWT's output isn't all gala performances and royal occasions. It's the more routine variety shows that keep the laughter going on a week-to-week -week basis. The comedians who appear in those could roughly be divided into regulars, occasionals and trusties. And for this next compilation we're offering representatives from each group, starting with the man who hosted as many shows of that kind as anybody. I went to the dentist last week, there was a sheik in there, and he was a nice man. The dentist said, Sheik Mohammed, your teeth are fine. He said, drill anyway, I feel lucky. Yeah. I will G G sleep. Shibom, shibom, rati jati ja. Shibom, shibom, rati jati ja. Shibom, shibom, rati jati ja. Oh, sure. I'm trying my best. Well, I want to sing it. So do I. Life could be a dream. If you would take me up to paradise of a bird. Shibom, I tell you that you're the only one that I love. She like to be a dream sweet. Hello, hello again. Oh, rat it, 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 you got me at it now. What are you doing? Climb it, where are you? Hey, stop it. What? What's green? Got eight legs and four wings. I don't know. I don't know. I'll just go up your leg. I wouldn't. Well, I was driving down this night on the M1, whatever it was, MI, whatever, and <laughs> in out those cones. <laughs> I'm going on happily in my little three wheeler, Robin Ryan Coupe. Or the head camshaft. <laughs> and all of a sudden, this fella flashed past me shit on a Japanese kimikaze waka waka waka. Moped. <laughs> and he starts having a conversation on the motorway. <laughs> he 
can't talk with the motorway because you had to wear the wind. <laughs> so I'm talking to her through a window of a three wheeled like Robert Ryan Cooper or Red Cancer with a bobbing dog. <laughs> I'm going to let this man in my own business. <laughs> Have you got a light? I said a light. I said, don't want to get yourself killed. You say I only smoke five a day. Beautiful song now, dedicated to my first true love because about two years ago when I was on holiday in Spain, I met a young lady there and well, we fell madly and passionately in love with each other. So much so that she came over to England to live with me and well, as you can imagine, we got on really well for the first six months. Until one day I looked at her and it suddenly dawned on me that she was a right ugly cow. <laughs> Heavy, he's Russ Abbott, accompanied by the inflatable Bella Emberg. Well, as we're now coming up to our final compilation, let me emphasize that this has been very much a personal selection, and if you didn't agree with any of my choices, well, I can only quote my grandmother, who used to say, if everybody liked the same things, they'd all have been after your grandfather. <laughs> this would also seem an appropriate moment to thank all those laughter makers, both the ones we've seen and the ones we didn't have space for, for everything they did over the past two and a bit decades to provide us with at least a temporary remission from seriousness. If, as some say, laughter is what distinguishes man from the beasts, it's they who've helped us exercise that distinction. So let's move into our last little lot, which is a group quite unashamedly labelled Compilers Perks because it consists of my own favourite funny people. What they have in common, I wouldn't say, except that none of them reminds me of anybody else, and they all can make me laugh before they even open their mouths. As for instance... Well, I'd like to tell you about my own seven wonders of the world. As I say, the things that make my life that be special. The first wonder is, of course, the Taj Mahal, the best Indian restaurant in West Ham. <laughs> the second is seeing someone on the South Bank show you've heard of. <laughs> Number three is the Colossus of Rhodes, or Spaghetti Junction to you, a fine example of what an architect can do when he's pissed. <laughs> the fourth wonder of the world, the great ancient pyramids of Egypt. Now the wonder is, not who built them, but who nicked the walnuts off the top. <laughs> Ali, Ali. 
The fifth wonder is that Harry Carpenter still believes that someone somewhere gives a toss who wins the boat race. <laughs> wonder how Oxford and Cambridge keep getting in the final. <laughs> the sixth wonder is courage, like the first man ever to eat a snail. <laughs> you tried to slug first, but you put salt on it and it went. <laughs> the seventh wonder of the world is memory. For example, can you all remember covering your school exercise books with wallpaper? Remember that, you can always tell what a really horrible house the kid next to you had. Do we have a question? Is Martin Shaw in the house? Martin Shaw, folks. Yes. Martin Shaw. Yes. Do we have a question, please? What do you say to people who accuse you of bad taste? I say, up yours. <laughs> scare me. I don't know. They're so transient. When I meet a guy now, the first question I ask myself is, is this the man I want my children to spend their weekends with? It's nice to walk along English streets if you're an American. I stood at a bus stop, some man walked up and went, fag? Excuse me? <laughs> fag? No, but I find you very attractive. Then you ask directions. Uh, pardon me, can you tell me where Hyde Park is? Thank you. Thank you very much. And then you get into a cab. And these are the nicest cab drivers in the world. You can get in and say, All right, listen, I'm a little loaded. I gotta get to Bob's house. No problem. Here we go. We know, but if you take the same cab in New York, it's a guy that's going, First time in New York? <laughs> Cuando means when, I know that, you know the song. If you love me, tell me when. Cuando, 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 so romantic. Same song in English. If you love me, tell me when. When, 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 when. There's your little wife too, hello darling. <laughs> <laughs> little Judy, am I right? Judy? Is that a... Tell me the history of that frock, Judy. <laughs> Is it a furnishing fabric? Is it... You were very wise to remove the curtain rings. You know? I was watching the sumo wrestling the other night on the telly. I was watching it for 20 minutes before I realised it wasn't the darts. When Chick Murray once told me he fell in the street and a woman said to him, Did you fall? He said, No, I'm trying to break a bar of chocolate in my back pocket. <laughs> Yeah. 